Hey, what's up everybody? It is Kellen here from Star Your Systems and welcome to another MX vs. ATV Supercross Encore official track gameplay video where today we are playing round 9 at Toronto. Did a 103.2. We're going to try to beat that today. We're going to do 10 laps on all time, which uh, the AI seems to be getting easier and easier. And I want to start off this video by just asking you guys to do me a favor real quick if you can. Uh, my fiance, wonderful fiance, Hannah. Um, Really, she makes a lot of this stuff possible. If it wasn't for her, I would not be able to make videos day in and day out. And so when I get the chance to help her out, I want to do what I can with the following that we have. Um, if you guys can just go down to the description and click on a uh, Facebook link, it'll have like a little title next to it that'll say like, click on this to help out. Um, it'll be a Facebook link to a page. She's competing in a uh, sort of beauty pageant thing for uh, our hometown's uh, Miss blah 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 pageant and uh she can be like the most popular person or whatever if she gets the most likes and comments on her photos so i'll just link you to the photo if you can go like it comment to just say like you know go hannah or whatever um that'd be a huge help because we're trying to help her win this thing because it's the last time that she compete can compete as uh my silly self went and got all hitched with her and now we're, when she gets married obviously she can't be a miss something because she'll be a mrs something so um, last time she can compete, I just want to help her out. If you guys could help me out by doing that, that'd be a huge help. All right, thanks. Let's get into the track. Here we are on Toronto, and uh, an interesting track this week. It goes back and forth across the start this one time, and then it has like this little final section here, and then uh, it has the finish line, and then you turn back down the start straight. So you guys already saw basically what the track looked like in the first little segment while I was blabbing on about that Facebook thing. Um, but basically it's a sharp little left-hand first corner, but it goes right into a 180 U-turn, so that's going to absolutely suck in sim. Anyway, um, little rollers and then a 3-2 option, a 180 halfway through there, and then a small whoop section. Going to be another really tight track, but the Toronto floor actually is pretty big, so I think that they'll be able to build it reasonably well-sized. Long rhythm lane, couple different options. This is pretty much the one that I do for uh, this particular game. 180 right hand bull corner to a triple and then a 180 left hand so again just lots and lots of 180s and not a lot of real rhythm lanes or anything to get momentum going and then oh look another wall jump into a sand section let's see how many more times they're going to do that this year huh just did it last week at atlanta we go back across the start straight into this corner there's gonna be a couple different options here i'm sure but uh just get a little kind of freaked out crazy going through there and then a 180 to the finish Pretty straightforward lap at Toronto. Again, kind of not a super inspired layout in, all, in my honest opinion. I think it's kind of a kind of a lame layout, but it's all right. We'll see how it works in real life. Um, and as for real life, um, how about it? We keep talking about how great Tomac's been, and uh, everybody seems to think something's wrong with Dungey. I have adamantly stated that I think Dungey's in a perfect position championship-wise and is not going to push himself above his... Uh, comfort zone if you will and uh here here this weekend last weekend in atlanta gets a start nobody around him tomac in around 10th muskan buried behind that somewhere um the only person or only two people that it seemed like we're gonna do anything at the beginning was uh maybe cole steely or chad reed and I, well i mean blake baggett was looking good but he just i i mean you kind of know what to expect out of baggett in supercross and as much in my mind as I was like, oh man, Baggett, if he could go get Dungey, that'd be sweet. He kind of knew, like, I, I don't know how realistic that's going to be. And Baggett himself even was kind of, like, super stoked on getting third in the end. So, um, but Reed went down. Steely just seemed to kind of have an off night anyway. Uh, Muskan came from way back to get fifth. And the only, like, real sort of exciting thing was Tomac came from 10th to get to second. And was way behind Dungey, and due to pretty much lap traffic, he was starting to catch him by big chunks at the end. But it still really wasn't that close, like as close as I think Ralph was trying to make it sound. And yeah, I mean, in my honest opinion, that was just a typical Dungey ride. Like he gets a start, he knows how um, close everybody is behind him. He's checking them each time they come through. He knew Tomac was coming. He knew he could turn it up if he needed to, but uh, he just cruised to the win. And now. Huge points gap. I mean, I think he's got a full race distance points gap on Muskan. Obviously, everybody lost out in the uh, points haul in some shape or form, but Muskan was the closest. Tomac is more than a race distance down. And uh, 
we've got pretty much half the season plus one race to go. So I mean, we got nine more rounds, I think it is, or, or ten more rounds to go. Nine more rounds, yeah. So we have round nine to seventeen from here, and I just like, I mean, what? Is, so basically, the way it stands right now, with with Marvin being twenty five points down, is basically if Marvin wins every weekend from here on out, and Dungey finishes second, Marvin would catch him. Uh, right before the last round, I think they would go into the last round like a point apart or something like that. And we all pretty much know that Dungey's consistency is ridiculous. Ever since he's got on KTM, he's had no real mechanical issues except for that broken shock at Anaheim. And then he had an electrical malfunction once, but even that wasn't really a deterrent. Um, not as much as Suzuki screwed him over when he ran out of gas at Freestone or when his bike wouldn't start at Southwick or when his chain fell off at Anaheim 2 or all stuff like that. He's been a lot more reliable on a KTM. So for people saying, oh man, he could have a DNF, I don't know. Either way, Tomac was ripping for sure, and it was cool to see that he came from so far back and still almost made a race of it, but Dungey is just, I mean, it's just Ryan Dungey. He just knows how to win these championships every single year. He's just so consistent, so good, wins the races that come to him, and the ones that he can't win, he just settles and still gets good podium finishes. and. He's just pretty hard to beat when it comes to these championships. So I still think Dungey's going to win it. Everybody was trying to come up with a reason why Dungey wouldn't win it, and I'm just telling you that in my opinion, I think Dungey is still going to win this championship. Um, and it, honestly, he probably won't have much troubles getting there. Uh, onto the 250s, though. Awesome, awesome, possum. Zach Osborne wins his first 250 main event. Long time coming, 10 year uh, pro, um, several years in Europe, uh, racing for the Dixon Racing Yamaha team, and really having a pretty good career in Europe. Um, probably could still go over there and probably find a pretty good ride. Uh, but now he's just uh, finally found that step that he needs to find, training with Alden Baker to uh, put that rocks, Rockstar Husqvarna up on the top step. And I was actually trying to think of this in my head. I know Rockstar or not Rockstar, I know Husqvarna has had wins in the 250cc class, uh, first of which being uh, Travis Preston winning, I believe, in 2001 when Grant Langston fist bumped over a triple at Houston or something and then went over the bars in the next corner. Um, and they've had some wins since. Um, they haven't slouched, I think, I'm pretty sure they've had wins since at least. Either way, I think this is the first time in the 250 class that a Husqvarna has led the points, at least in a long time. I uh, spoke it over with it um, with my dad a little bit, who's been around motos since the 60s, basically, and he knows a lot about the history, and he was trying to think uh, of guys that may have had the points lead, but never really seemed to come across someone in the, the lower division that had the points lead. I know Anderson at one point has led the points and there's been some guys on Husqvarna's way back in the day that were points leaders in the Supercross series, but um, in terms of the 250 class, I think that may be the first ever red plate aboard a Husqvarna. So that's pretty cool to see them uh, you know, turn things around. Zach Osborne's looking really strong now, has a points lead obviously. And uh, another kind of weird off night for Savachi. I, I mean, I, Hate to make it sound like it's going to be kind of a habit, but, you know, Savachi didn't look that great at the opener. And this week he looked about as kind of subpar, but this time he didn't get a start to prove that he can still win these races. Um, I think, honestly, in my opinion, his teammate Cian Cerullo looked, looked faster and better than him, but he just couldn't stay off the ground and had some mistakes and stuff like that. And Osborne just seems like he's kind of got it all figured out. Speed-wise, he looks like he's the fastest. Um, his fitness is great. He looks really strong late into the main events. And I'm just keen to see on whether or not, you know, AC and Savachi could turn it around. Christian Craig having a disastrous season so far. Um, went down in, uh, I don't think he went down in practice, but he went down at the beginning of the heat. Got up, charged almost into transfer, and then trying to avoid a downrider in the whoops. Uh, checked up and went over the bars and... Uh, I guess he had just like a slight concussion, wasn't a big, really big thing, but obviously concussion protocol becoming a lot more stricter in American sports. So uh, whether it's his own terms or not, I think is a good idea that he sat out the rest of the night. But it's unfortunate because that pretty much means his championship is over, uh, being pretty far down in the championship at this point. Um, so we'll see him come back, and I think that he can certainly still win races, but uh, I think that's the end of Craig's championship. And then 
The Geico Honda team just had a cloud over their head all night anyway, as in practice, Chase Sexton, uh, pretty much their man that they're expecting is going to be the next big thing at Geico Honda. Going to make his Supercross debut and eats crap in the whoops and breaks his leg. Um, I never saw the crash. I just saw him being uh, carried off on the medical mule. and Yeah, not a, not a good thing for Sexton, and hopefully he'll be able to get a quick recovery and be apparently good enough to be Colt Nichols and uh, break your femur uh, in early December and be back by mid-February because when has anyone ever fractured or broke their femur and be back in about three months? I've never ever heard of that in my life. So realistically speaking, Sexton's probably out for the year with that injury, but if you're Colton Nichols, then Chase Sexton could maybe be back by sometime in the Nationals. We'll have to see. Speaking of Nichols, a third place finish um, great ride on pretty much a broken femur. He actually almost caught Alex Martin, who was battling with his teammate Jordan Smith the entire main event until they got together and Smith went down. So Nichols is surprising the crap out of me. I can't believe he's riding that well. And uh, yeah, that's your podium. And I mean, I think Osborne's carrying a lot of momentum into Canada now. Uh, we'll have to see what Savachi and AC can do to turn it around. And maybe Craig becomes a spoiler now. Maybe the TLG, D, TLD guys get into the mix or what have you, but uh, yeah. So that's been uh, another gameplay video on an MX Race ATV Supercross Encore official track, Toronto round nine of the series. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see you guys in the next one.